anyway, quite a while ago, WattCycle um, offered to send me a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery, and I started on a video. But as you know, I all got I got COVID for about three weeks, and I'm um, just finally getting around to finishing it up. So here it is. Here's some stuff off their website. You know the specs on it and everything else. Um, I'm not going to rip it apart and break it down like some people do, but I watched some other videos and they said, you know, pretty much it does meet all the specs that they claim and uh, it does have a 200 amp BMS and actually the BMS will hold like 800 amps for a very short period of time, but it's all overload protected and um, temperature protected and stuff. So um, this is, you know, basically what the battery specs are. And we're going to go into just, you know, showing you some things that one of these batteries is good for doing. Um, now, it came packed well. You can see it's a 200 amp hour battery and it's fairly light. It's only a little bit over 40 pounds, I think. Um, really nice, lightweight. I'm going to eventually use this to replace the two lead acid batteries that I have in the pole barn here. But uh, this is just, you know, really nice and light. So I'm just... Uh, gonna play around with it and show you exactly you know what i'm i'm gonna do with it over time and you know how it's really nice to have a battery like this around and it came with a nice uh information pamphlet with all your you know charge uh specs and everything else and i did buy a cheap battery charger because they didn't have any available at the time but i would not recommend that that is definitely not the way to go with a good battery it could cause problems I'll show you later at the end. They did send out the right one. But anyhow, I bought a um, little USB and cigarette lighter plug, and I had a shunt here and a 1200 watt sine wave inverter that I'm going to use eventually in this video. And it was just a fuse to protect everything. So just for, you know, a lot of uses, I'm going to use it as a 12 volt battery for, you know, running like things that plug into cigarette lighters and recharging cell phones and other items that charge through USB. So this was just a um, little assembly that I bought off of Amazon. Came with all the lugs on and everything else. And I'm just going to mount it on here to the plus and minus. And this, you know, really was a fairly easy hookup and it does have a fuse with it and everything else, so... A good way to get a cigarette lighter plug on this battery. Now the voltage is a little bit higher than a lead acid battery, so you have to make sure that you know everything that you're going to run off it is uh, tolerant of the higher voltages. But anyhow, I've got to recharge my little oscilloscope here, so I'm just going to plug that in for a while, let that charge up, and you can see it's just standard USB charger on it, so that'll work good. And let's go over and I'll show you one of the uses I've got for it. Um, this is a diesel tank that I use for filling the tractors and actually for um, filling up cans when I, you know, want an extra can around and stuff like that. So it runs on 12 volts and usually I drag that big lead acid battery over here, but this here, here is so much easier to do. It's got nice handles on it, easy to pick up and lightweight. And then let's say I need some air in a little little tire. Um, I don't have one of those expensive cordless compressors, but I've got one of these 12 volt car compressors. And just set it, and I've got that hooked up to the, the watt cycle battery there. And again, I can, you know, it's real easy to uh, be able to just, you know, do stuff like this. That's not near power cord. And that there just blows up, cycles on and off, and checks the pressure until it's done. And there it is. All right, now this is before fridge that we use in the car. We found out that when we go to down to Costco and we stop at doctors and stuff like that, the um, power in the car turns off when you turn the car off. So I'm just going to slide this battery in here. We're going down today, and we've got probably be about a six-hour trip, and it's really hot out, and um, some doctor's appointments and stuff. So I'm just going to plug this fridge right into the battery there. And this would actually be good for camping. Um, I'll show you at the end. It probably run the fridge all, all weekend long for you know a nice camping trip. But um, 
Runs it good, and here we are about six hours later. We're home. It's been out in the sun all day, and my ice cream sandwiches are still frozen, and the milk and half and half and cheese and stuff still I just perfect. So I did leave it plugged in in the garage for another 24 hours, and uh, battery held it fine at 30 degrees. So I'm going to say this would be, you know, a good combination um, for either emergency or if you're going camping, this battery would work good too. Now I'm going to uh, next just kind of show you how to build your own power station. And like I said, I had the um, that sign, pure sine wave inverter around and the fuse there that I did buy. And I'm just going to mount the shunt there too so I can monitor it. You don't really need a shunt, but it helps to know exactly uh, the state of your battery. So there it is. A couple minutes later, I threw together a 1200 watt power station. And it's kind of like those portable ones that you buy. But um, when they break down, you throw the whole thing out or you send it back and pay a couple hundred dollars in shipping. Something like this, you could easily replace one piece or fix it or upgrade it or add a second battery, put it in a box or something like that. But pretty much this would be, you know, great for even a weekend of remote camping or something like that. But I'm going to show you, let's say you do craft shows and you want to run your laser during a craft show. So I'm going to load everything up in a chunk of my car here and take off and get to my craft show and set it up. Now I've got this one laser that I've um, set up to mount on a folding saw stand. This is for a a miter saw actually and I'm gonna set up and you know just run some signs so this is an old laser that I did uh, I did modify some to make it so I could make some uh, 40 inch long actually 39 and a half inch long signs and the good thing about it is that it does have a uh, memory card and a controller built in so all I gotta do is set it up, stick my sign up, let's say 40 bucks a sign, and we are ready to go. We just need some power to run it. Alright, so let's plug this in, get things going here, and we're all set in business, ready to go. And as I said, this has its own controller, and uh, so you can run jobs from it. You can load it up with different jobs. And we're ready to go. So now the laser is running off the battery. Um, it's running off the 110. And I'm just going to frame in. I took a piece of plywood and cut for this sign. But I make a lot of these uh, on, I actually do them on ash. But for now, I'm just going to show you, you know, plywood. They're worth a little bit more if you take and use a piece of wood. And I can kind of monitor what's going on here with the battery. And we're using the shunt. And... Um, let the laser run. Now, this I'm running this, uh, it's a little bit over two hours to make this sign at the speed it's burning and stuff. It's going really slow, but, um, I find I get the best results when I do run it on ash. With plywood, I do run into problems every once in a while, and I'll show you in a second. But, you know, there's a sign, uh, you can make that remotely. You don't need power, just running off the battery. And there you can see what happens when you get a bad spot in the plywood. You get some overburning. So this sign actually, you know, is not a perfect example of one, but it does show you how you can run a laser off of, uh, you know, a simple power station like this. And let's just go back and finish up, do the outline. So, you know, something like this would even be good if you do craft shows. I know I have people all the time asking me if you can run these lasers um, off a battery. And yes, you can with the uh, inverter. And then I do a lot of yard work and I've been using battery tools for my yard work. So what I do is I take this out and I'm using this for charging. Now, when you're working with batteries, you need at least three batteries. One in the tool that you're wearing down, one cooling down, and one in the charger. You always have to let the battery cool a little bit before charging. So it pays to have three batteries with you. And again, I've got a lot of hedges to trim and a lot of um, weeds to whack and stuff like that. And it's will keep my, you know, keep my batteries going. And usually by the time one is uh, down, I've got another one ready. So 
I got that hacked off there. And you can see this does work good for, you know, remote charging uh, things like power tools. Now, WattCycle did finally get the proper battery charger in stock. And I will tell you, if you're buying a battery like this, it pays to get the right charger for um, fire safety and everything else. Um, this is a high-quality charger, all made out of aluminum case with cooling fans and everything else. So it does meet some of the uh, specs. And, you know, it pays definitely to go with the right charger. All right, so now what we're going to do is... I'm going to show you that I can run a 3D printer off of this also. Um, let's say you want to go to a craft show, bring your 3D printer set up and, you know, run some different prints. You can save them right on the memory card set up. Uh, and the 3D printer usually draws between 10 and 400 watts, I'm finding out. And there it is, it's running 340. When the, the, the heat bed kicks on, it does run a little bit higher. But plus the inverter does draw some power too. But I'm just going to show you. So I, you know, I loaded up a 3D print. I've got to make a couple of these, and I'm just going to run it. Each one takes about 45 minutes, and you can see I'm just going to monitor how many I can get out of it. And oh, the power went out the house again. So this was a good test. You can see the printer's still running, uh, all hooked up to that battery. So boy, what luck I got into today. We've got big storms the last couple of days. Anyhow, power's back on, but I'm still running on batteries. And let's just show you that one came out good. Prints perfect. No, you know, no change whether it's plugged into the wall or plugged into the uh, pure sine wave inverter. So let's crank out another one there. And oops, a bit hot bed still really hot. It's hard to get off till it cools a little bit. Just flex it a little bit and pop right off. And another one. And finally I wound up doing doing four of them. And there they are. I used 0.59 kilowatt hours of the battery of electric. And you can see the uh, Battery still at 13.1 volts right now. And drawing 20 watts in at 73% after running for over over three hours. So it looks like you could easily run this all day at a craft show. And now I'm going to plug it in with this uh, new charger here and show you that uh, actually it's putting out 20.07 amps, 0605. So it does meet the specs and... Um, doesn't get overly hot charging or anything and the battery stays nice and cool charging so definitely if you buy a battery buy one of these chargers if you're not going to charge it on solar then one last test i'm going to show you i've got two freezers in the basement and I'm trying to get an idea of how long they will run on a battery like this Oop, i can't plug it in there i need a right angle adapter for that weird freezer plug but I'm just going to plug this in and I'm going to reset. I'll, I'll put my kilowatt meter on here just to uh, get some measurements too. Reset that back to zero before we start. And let's plug the freezer in. And we're going to let it run for 24 hours. Now it starts out, um, you can see the compressor is not running or anything. It's just uh, drawing some power for the inverter there. And then we'll give it a while. And now all of a sudden the compressor kicked in. It draws about 100 watts. Actually, it's 930. 93.8 watts, I mean. And after 12 hours, the battery's at 82% running the freezer. In 24 hours, the battery is still at 63%. So I could run this one freezer two days or probably two freezers for one day. Now, that's one of the most important things to us, um, keep the food frozen. So um, I think this battery really is great to have around just, you know, if for nothing else, just for blackouts and power outages and stuff to run the freezer. 
it looks like um you know our power outage is basically most of them are less than 24 hours but um could always hook a solar panel up to it if i got a couple more days to go but um just wanted to show you everything's still frozen ready to go and um that's really a you know a good thing to have around so i just thought i'd you know show you some ideas of what you can do with one of these batteries um 200 amp hour really seems to be the sweet spot when it comes to both price and the amount of power energy that it contains for you know if you want to go camping for a weekend or you know run something that draws a little more power or stuff like that so um it seems like a really great battery to me and i'll put some links down below in case anybody's interested in one um and you know just some ideas of how you could actually you know put it to work for you and don't forget to order the proper charger if you do go with one of the batteries because um that's really a safety factor thanks for watching please like and subscribe